I'm James Atkins with University of Delaware Cooperative Extension. I'm here south of Georgetown, Delaware at Baxter Farms, and we are planning a hydraulic downforce comparison test plot. This project is a cooperative project between Ag Leader and the University of Delaware involving the UD agronomist Jared Miller, Ag Leader agronomist Chad Swindall, Travis Green from Ag Leader, and Dave Worry from Hooper Incorporated. Today, we will be planting six different downforce plots uh, that range from light downforce with uplift springs to heavy downforce without uplift springs. So we will replicate this plot across a number of locations throughout Delaware. We've already planted two studies uh, in both no-till conditions and in strip-till in varying soil types. So today, we're planting into a vetch and henbit cover crop. And I'm going to show you a little bit about how the planter works and then get inside the cab of the tractor to show you how the plants are actually planted and what the downforce readouts look like. Let's talk a little bit about the planter itself. This is a John Deere 7200 planter with several upgrades. This was originally a 16 row planter that we cut down over this winter to be a 6 row planter. Uh, one of the first things you'll notice is it's been update, upgraded to shore drive electric drives for each unit with a V-set meter running off vacuum. This is our downforce actuator here. Now these are on each of the six units. Uh, we have uplift springs installed right now. Later I will be taking those uplift springs off to look at three levels of downforce without the uplift. This is a solenoid for our in application. Around on the front side, this tank on this side is running a 2x2 two two fertilizer application. This is a unit mounted fertilizer, 2 inches below and 2 inches beside the seed. And there's our modules that control all the planter drives and swath control for the fertilizer. Here's our downforce manifold that controls the downforce applied on each of the six units separately. On this side is our tank for our infro application. Uh, we're applying about five gallons per acre of an infro solution. And these mixes are determined by the cooperating farmer that we are working with. This planter is equipped with Martin floating row cleaners uh, with spike wheels. They tend to be working fairly well in this cover crop. As you can see, it's doing a decent job of cleaning the green cover out of the way. And now we're going to move up into the tractor. So we're in the tractor now, actively planting. This is the Agnator in Command 1200 display that controls the planter population, swath control of the planter units, swath control on both in furrow and starter fertilizer, and controls the downforce settings. So our applied downforce is set right here. As you can see, we are maxed out at about 488 pounds. This is a very tight ground that we're in right now and seeing variable gauge wheel loads. All this is being mapped on the other side as far as down force applied and gauge wheel measurements. So behind us is the planter. As you can see, we're making a little strip with the row cleaner to plant through. And we're fine in with the two by two fertilizer mounted on the unit. And the ground's pretty tight down deep and that's what's causing us to put down maximum down force here. The primary reason for conducting this experiment is to try and quantify any differences between downforce settings, whether with uplift springs or without, in varying soil conditions across the state. And the idea behind this would be we can tag a number uh, of potential yield increase, emergence dates, that type of stuff, uh, to various downforce settings to give a farmer a return on investment number as to whether this equipment can benefit their operation. We'll be out here multiple times throughout the season. We'll be out here about five days from now doing emergence counts, two days later, two days after that, and then flying periodically with drones and getting satellite NDVI imagery. At the end of the year, we'll analyze our yield and try and come up with some economic numbers here. Thank you for listening and have a good day.